Aloha mai kakou. Aloha. Welcome everybody to the town hall meeting to discuss the dangers of entering and exiting Coco Marina Shopping Center. What do you mean the dangers of entering and exiting a shopping center? I mean, uh, are we talking about a war zone? No. Are we talking about dangers to our body because of theft or mugging? No. We're talking about something that industrial psychologists talk about, industrial blindness. The example is where in the factory, there is a ladder that's missing a rung. But the rung has been missing for so long, people become blind to it. The Coco Marina left turn lane has been a danger to the community for so long, for almost decades, that we've almost forgotten about it, except there's a group called and it's not mothers against drunk driving, it's mothers against left turn lanes into the shopping center. And they evidently are at the debate tonight, and thank you guys all for coming. You did uh, get taken away by the three o'clock debate with Obama and uh, Romney, or the seven o'clock with uh, Hirono and Lingle. So thank you all for coming here, but there's an industrial blindness in our community we wanna open your eyes to today and we want to talk about it in, in two, two frameworks, if you will. One is like a definition of the problem. Those of you who live in Portlock have a different way of looking at the problem. Those of you who go there for just shopping have a different way of looking at the problem. And those of you who may live in Kalama Valley have a different way of looking at the shopping center because basically all you want to do is turn left to get on a little, little home road to go home. So it's a matter of how and your perspective from which you view this that you're going to suggest that the solutions, which at the end, we hope we will arrive at, but it's basically to discuss what we should do with that problem that's been around for so long that we are not gonna give up, and you guys are Hawaii Kai, and Hawaii Kai never gives up. My office never has a phone call that is uh, never answered about many, many problems that keep occurring and reoccurring. So before we get started in terms of defining and discussing the problem, I have a few people to introduce. The first is on my left one of the uh, uh, special guests on your agenda, if you looked at your agenda, please welcome uh, Councilman Stanley Chang. Stanley, thank you for coming out. Thank you. Stanley, thank you very much. Stanley said he may not be able to stay the whole evening, but he's here, and everybody is supposed to be eating some uh, refreshments uh, while you are here, so in case you're going to a fundraiser, you get it free here first. <clears throat> uh, a second uh, guest that uh, we have our members of the neighborhood board. We have, first I'm gonna give uh, credence to the retired members of the neighborhood board. Don Huff is here. Don, thank you for being here. This is where the neighborhood board meets and uh, this is their, their territory. This is where we have all the town hall meetings, except for the one where they had the um, pitchforks and torches. Where was that one? Remember when the shark, when we had the problem? That was at uh, Camilo Iki Elementary. That was uh, really quite, a, quite an evening. But we also have a sitting member of the Hawaii Kai Neighborhood Board, and we have the chair of the Transportation Committee, Rene Garvin. Rene, welcome. Thank you for coming out. <clears throat> and I see another lady who is also a new member of the Neighborhood Board. Her name is Natalie Iwase, Iwasa, but she's also known as the Bicycle Mom. Welcome, Natalie. And I'm also, as I was talking about the alumnus of the Hawaii Kai Neighborhood Board, I, I just remembered there's Richard Baker. Dick Baker, welcome back. You've been, not been here for a while. Dick Baker from the Hawaii Kai Neighborhood Board. <clears throat> but everybody uh, who's come tonight is very special. Not only because of you didn't watch uh, or stay back to argue about the debate between the President and, and Governor Romney, or the other debate, we have people who are really concerned about this issue. And the people we're gonna talk about are just gonna kick off from their perspective. And we're gonna hear from the Honolulu Police Department, and we're gonna hear from the Coco Marina people. Uh, the Director of Transportation sends his regrets. The, uh, let me put it this way. The State Department of Transportation has been a little bit under the weather recently. They have a bridge in Waihawa that people, you want to talk about pitchforks and torches? They had a town hall meeting where 
everybody was grabbing the microphones. Let me say something to you guys about this, that, and the other thing. We have a mild situation compared to that, but let us be very frank, ladies and gentlemen. This is an accident waiting to happen. This is continually near misses, uh, and we're gonna hear from the, uh, Sergeant Kurosaki about what actually are the numbers of not only hits in terms of uh, backenders or side swipes, but it's accidents continually waiting to happen. So there's an anxiety, and, and I know when the representative of Coco Marina talks, uh, I think there's probably a downside to the business when customers fear to drive in freely and openly. I think, well, maybe I'll go to Aina Haina on my way. I'll go to the Aina Haina shopping center. I'm gonna go into town. I won't go into Coco Marina because that left turn lane is a little bit spooky. But we will hear from those uh, individuals and representatives. But what I want to first do is call up the Honolulu Police Department, who kind of keeps the peace in not only the uh, state of Hawaii and in our neighborhood, but also keeps statistics on what's going on at the Hawaii Kai neighborhood, uh, at the Hawaii Kai Coca Marina and the neighborhood. Please welcome Sergeant Kurosaki. Sergeant, thank you. It's all yours. Hi, I'm Sergeant Kurosaki from um, the District Seven Patrol. Um, I was I came here to give you guys some information on the accidents that in that area. Um, these statistics statistics was done between September 10, 2011 to September 10, 2012. So we had a total of um, 87 accidents, motor vehicle accidents. 11, 11 was traffic accidents on Kalani. Yeah. The other 76 was accidents in the shopping center itself. Okay, we used the address 7170 yeah, to, to get these statistics. So basically the rest was non-traffic. Non-traffic meaning it was off of the uh, highway. Yeah? Other than um, 11 accidents I was on Kalani between that one year period, um, 10 were minor accidents. Um, that means either in, no injury or um, less than $3,000 damage. One was a major accident, and that could have been either over $3,000 or serious or substantial bodily injury, or it could be a government vehicle also, yeah. So that's all I have for you guys. Any, any? Can, can we take some questions on the numbers? Could you repeat yeah. the time frame again? Was that just one year? Yes, one year. Could you go back three years or five years? We could, we could go back, um, but the command gave me that one okay. year. Yeah. So you had those memorized. Right. right. It was a simple, your, uh, yeah. Statistical. <laughs> right. <laughs> we could just Google the HP. Right. Numbers. So it, it's just <laughs> small time frame, like like you guys said. Um, it's probably a you know it's it it could be a dangerous area. I mean we don't we 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 can't take sides on either way yeah but Natalie sure you, you guys the question know. and then I'll repeat it for the microphone I just wanted to um, clarify so since we're looking at this driveway area in mm -hmm. particular are all of those 11 that occurred on the highway then right in that area see it, it, With it, 11 accidents that occurred inside of the actual turns into the words, shopping center right here right that's the one right we yeah. the um in other words, Chevron, yes. station Chevron station Chevron right. station right here okay we we didn't have that that um information we it's hard for us to look up every accident that's so why just by the address only right by exactly address. exactly so it's kind of misleading don't take these numbers as you know that's the best we have yeah the, the other question that follows from that mm -hmm. is Accidents inside of the shopping center. What mm -hmm. does that mean? Like somebody banged their door against somebody else? Or no. Somebody ran into somebody yeah, or what? could be could be a you know fender bender inside the or somebody parking their car, side swiped the car, or you know. But seventy six of those that we pulled for the address right by the shopping center is all inside the shopping center. Yeah. Well. I know you're going to ask a very pointed question. So you, you, you want to shout it out or you want me to repeat it? Yeah, I can shout it out. Uh, I was Rob Burns. Just wondering, if, is, do you consider this like if you graded from A to F, F being the you know, worst as far as uh, accidents go? Is this, because you know, using those numbers, I don't have anything to judge it against. As far as uh, is it safe being A or B? You're asking for our opinion. We, 
I, I can't say. I don't have any, enough information, and I was, you know, told to not, you know, take any sides on this part. Yeah. No, I, I mean, it's just a statistic. It's not opinion. It should be numerical. So, yeah, are 87 a lot of accidents for a shopping center, or compared to other shopping centers, it's a small amount, or is it heavy? We, di we didn't question? do the study of each shopping center, so, you know, I... It's hard for me to answer that. Rather I mean, surprise, 87. I expect maybe 8, 9, 10, right. 12. Would you have, yes, no, madam. It was kind of the same. Same, same you question. Know, comparatively, you know, you, but you have to understand, though, these numbers, you, you know, it's, it's not um, really good because maybe it happened around there, but they might have used a different address, yeah? So, I mean, you have to understand that. And for us to research it, it's, it's hard for us to go back and, you know, Use which I just into like turning in and pulling out, or are they just in that one? Well, the best we can do to um, get these numbers is to get an address. You know that address for the um, for Chevron, yeah. And if the officer used a different address, you know, the inter if it happened on the intersection a little bit down, it might have happened on that street area, or you know. But, um, but what's your gut feeling? Are most of them pulling out, pulling in, getting free from the... I cannot say. I, I wouldn't, you know, I cannot say, you know, I would have to look case by case each each, each accident, yeah. Because but I think the way to fix a problem is first to find out what really the problem is, yeah? Right. And once you know what the problem is, then you can fix the problem. Right, right. Otherwise, you're just talking about yeah. it. Right. So today is an opening discussion of the problem, yeah. and then for research, uh, if you have anybody who wants to do a PhD dissertation research, we would more than welcome <laughs> somebody <laughs> to come and collect the data, going in, going out. But after Sergeant Kurosaki is going to be the Coco Marina and some of maybe their records or some of their perception of what's going on. Right. Was there a question, Mr. Holzman? Yeah, is there any way uh, the police department can monitor the situation closer in the future? Um, we can monitor, but to be specific, um, what do you specifically what, define how, how serious the problem is? Well, you know. This is just one area that we have problems with, yeah. We have a lot of areas too, so it's hard for us to put manpower there to monitor the situation. No, 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 no. Is that, I, I don't I'm know. talking about in terms of your statistics, mm -hmm. to be more specific, so you could be able to answer the questions better. I see, I see what you're saying. In other words, Joe Blow back into Joe Schmo. Okay. And you want to know that her, what exact area you mean? You're yeah. saying that? Yeah. We could do that, but um, you, you, I would have to get back with the command. I don't know if we have enough manpower to put somebody there to yeah. you know, get these, these statistics for you, yeah. We will follow that up with we have we can yeah. find the data. Yeah. Jeff, so uh, is that uh, something that we got 11 accidents. So those mm -hmm. 11 accidents uh, that were not in the shopping center that had that address would be readily accessible. Somebody could look over the records of 11 accidents and then say, oh, that really happened here or it really happened here. Or actually it was down here and that was just a number. I, I need to get back to you on, you know, how, how – um, we can look at these reports, yeah. I, I don't know how- It's not online how they, then, No, I don't, it's not, I don't, it's not online. It was, yeah. If that's your question, it's not online. Can we do a sound check, Olelo? Uh, by the way, we haven't acknowledged that Olelo is actually taking this with three cameras that come out and joined uh, us. I, uh, is it okay when they speak from the audience? Thank you, e, have some more food, guys. <laughs> three cameras, you guys get all you want. Other questions to Sergeant Kurosaki? Sergeant, anything else you want nope, to add? No. Nope. Do you live in Hawaii? Kai? No, I don't. I live on the. You other don't side shop of... in Coco Marina Shopping Center, then? No. Uh, I do <laughs> once in a while. <laughs> You're not anxious when you turn in or you turn out. Uh, I I usually yeah, I go around. Go yeah, on. yeah. Oh. It's different. Different. He turns yeah. his uh, light on and then he gets to. Yeah. Okay. Let's thank. You guys. So, okay. oh, you got a question? Wait. I forget what he just said. He said, "I should go around." And I think a lot of residents do. They don't want to mess with that term. And so they go around. And one of the potentials for accidents that I see is people stay in the right lane because they don't want to get tangled up in that, but they're going to turn left on the middle. So they're trying to cut over after that last left turner. But then somebody sometimes is pulling out of the shopping center to yes. turn left just about that time, so I think it's more in the potential 
And actually, people are pretty good at avoiding that. <laughs> But a lot of yeah, go over to the 76 station and go down the hill and yeah, do it otherwise. Like to help you. Any other questions to the sergeant? Otherwise, let's thank him for his coming out and his duty. Thank you very much. Sergeant, thank, thank, you you very thank, you. sergeant thank you for your service to the community. And thank you for looking at those numbers in a, a macro way. If we can get down, kind of dig down into the weeds a little bit. And uh, Jamie, where's Jamie? Jamie, if you could. Uh, uh, accompany the sergeant back. I know he's got to go back on duty, but it's where if we can refine some of those numbers, 87 different accidents in one year period. That 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 is surprising to me. I didn't expect uh, something that uh, large in terms of numbers. But let's hear it from the inside now of the Coco Marina Shopping Center. We have with us Christy Peacock, who's the marketing director. She's been with the, uh, the company. Let me say something nice before I introduce, I mean, not that I shouldn't say anything nice. <laughs> Let me say something that one of the reasons why, I, remember I talked about industrial blindness, it's been so bad for so long, the rung on the ladder is not even seen as missing any longer. <clears throat> because the word was on the street, Coco Marina, prior to its new ownership, of which Christy is going to speak from the vantage point of, would have nothing to do with even discussing this issue. DOT that, that met in my office with Jamie and I last week said, Coca Marina has really been not cooperative. In fact, wants nothing to do with this. I said, there's new management. There's a new spirit of cooperation. There's a new sense of this is a community issue, not just something private sector issue that used to have a turn into uh, Coca Marina just for the sake of maybe a McDonald's driveway or a drive-in. It's, it's bigger and a, and a larger community issue. So I'm gonna ask you to welcome Christy Peacock, the Director of Marketing, Coca Marina Shopping Center. Christy. Thank you. Um, yeah, I think I would say, I, I wanna say maybe three or four years ago, I know the general manager had contacted, I'm not sure who exactly she contacted, and I apologize, she couldn't make it tonight, but she did try to contact someone about the safety issue. And I know she was always told there wasn't enough accidents or there was no reason to look into it further. It was gonna to be too expensive or, so she kind of let it go and I think it was, she brought it up to a couple other people she mentioned to me and I think you guys have all been really supportive. So I think our main concern is safety. It really isn't about pulling people into our center or making them go elsewhere, that, that really isn't the concern. We just don't want people, you know, coming into our center, getting to an accident and it gives them a bad perception about coming to the center. So it's more about people's safety than driving business, honestly. So I spoke with Susie before I came today because I'm sorry, I wasn't really prepared and I never would have guessed we had 76 accidents in, inside of the center in one year, but I can, I can probably pull that information. I know when there's an accident in the center, security has to do a report. So if, if that helps at all. Um, I also wanted to say that the 7192 Kalaniani Ole address does go from, for the entire center, all the way from the corner to First Hawaiian Bank. So if they use that address, it could have been at either of the entrances or even the exit that's um, near First Hawaiian Bank side. But I think like you said, it, it's not so much just about people having an accident turning in at that one entrance, it's also people going around and possibly getting hit further down. Um, I know we have an open market at the center and while we were there on one Sunday, there was an accident. It was involving a moped. I'm not sure exactly what the situation was because I couldn't see from where I was. And I know later on in the day, someone posted another accident. I thought it was the same accident. And they said, no, it was a motorcycle this time. So there was two accidents in one day. Um, and that was pretty recent, I would say two or three months ago. But anyway, I'm just here to hear what everyone else has to say and report back because we're here to support whatever the best um, solution is. You know, not whether it's a light or whether it's a turn lane or whatever it is, I agree that people a lot of people do go around, but it still creates that chaos. I know some people that even will go, instead of going on Klonale Highway, will go through Hawaii Drive to come in at the other entrance. So, yeah, I think it's just more about safety. That's my, our number one concern. Question to Christy? She said she's open to listen to you. So you guys are next, but if you want to uh, ask her a question, ask her now, please. One way, maybe look at and see what the accidents are in there, but the parking stalls were a little bit wider, you could see a little better. <laughs> yeah, there, there are, I know, kind of the new spaces they made, I know were a little thinner, and then some spaces are bigger. 
Parking is always a big issue at the center. I mean, there's never enough. I think I actually used to do marketing for about 10 centers, and that's always the biggest concern is parking. Good suggestion. Mr. Burns, and then uh, Well, I was wondering, you know, the, the looking at, I mean, I'm thinking about two different issues. You got interior fender benders, like when you bump into some, you know, and it's tough to drive for some people in the first. And stuff. But then there's the dangerous ones where people are trying to turn in and turn out, you know, accelerating and slamming into each other. But it seems to me that the the ones in the interior are more of a nuisance, probably straight fenders and that sort of thing versus really dangerous. Mm -hmm. I could be wrong, but I mean, you can't. Right, because you're not usually going at high speeds through yeah. parking. But uh, speaking to the one issue that uh, you just mentioned about the stalls being small, there, it never ceases to amaze me. The designers of these parking lots always seem to make, uh, you know, space, you know, for things that aren't really necessary, like, you know, one little strip of grass, you know, those projected <laughs> right, right. little <laughs> islands that they have. You know, I mean, either you can bring it down to zero and let a car park all the way in so it doesn't, you know, have to park outside, which could be, you know, a problem. The interior problems are something that has to be handled by the management. But sometimes you can get, you know, like maybe six or eight feet wide of a, of a grass on the end of a parking mm -hmm. area on both sides, and maybe in the middle too. And, you know, we all love trees and everything, but, you know, sometimes you don't even have any trees, it's just a little strip of grass, which makes it much harder to park closer because you're jamming them in. Maybe you could remove them and paint them yellow instead of trying to make, you know, a, you know, high maintenance, you got to water it, cut it, and then all of this is stomped on by people and it's muddy in the winter and dry as a bone in the summer. And it's really not adding much of a, to the shopping experience, I think, but having like two inches or, or a few cars, spaces that are wide enough for a truck, truck only or something, right. might be, uh, might help out. Okay, yeah, and I can definitely, I will bring up the parking too because of all the, the 76 <laughs> accidents within the center. You know, as marketing, I don't, I'm not really privy to that kind of stuff, so that, that was kind of shocking. <laughs> I can understand the need once in a while for a 15 minute parking spot, but frankly, they got too many people. That was your question. That, that's my statement. <laughs> oh, that's your statement. Oh. Okay. Uh, you know, 15 minutes for parking, I can understand uh, like zipping. To get into the restaurant, yeah. So, so much and, and the parking is an ancillary part of what otherwise is the entrance and the exit. How many of you tried to turn left out of Coca Marina next to the Chevron Station? Tried to turn left going to Wyman How many of you tried to do it? I never. Listen, what, what did you do? What was it like? You have to be patient and look both ways. And <laughs> it's much no, really. easier. Yeah, you have to be patient. It's That's much all. easier. It's much easier to take uh, the exit out of uh, uh, Kamakani, which because you've got a traffic light yeah. there. Exactly. exactly. True. Right. Okay. It's the same thing. You just got to be patient. You don't want to yes. rush it because there's always an opening coming up. Sure. It always comes up. You just have to wait a little bit. Yeah, because there is a lack of patience, those who want to get to Kalama Valley, who don't want to wait for that uh, non-stacking lane, turn into uh, Cocoa Elementary, or they turn, uh, get in the right lane, and they go rapidly towards Cocoa Elementary, do a quick illegal U-turn to get yes. back to the light, to get through the green, to get into their home quicker. Elizabeth. That particular area, I just want to mention, sometimes when the bus is coming, because the bus stop is right there too. Oh yeah. It does create a little extra anxiety, if you will, if you're trying to turn out. Because now you have the bus coming. Locking your And it's there and, and it blocks. So I don't know how easy it is or if it would be factored into. But I just thought I'd add that, that that's another element that's right there that adds to the congestion and considerations when you're trying to 
Okay. The other thing I've noticed lately too, when you want to come out that way and make a left turn, the heads there have gotten bigger and it's come out and blocked the head. Is that the bottom guy? Are you for the bridge? Yeah. Considerably uh, vigorously. The, the edge is getting the higher, or? The higher or? The road in front of uh, Starbucks. Wider or higher? Yeah. Or higher? It's both. Oh, it's, it's, it's higher just, and it's wider. It's you wider can't see around. you got to pull out farther in order to see the traffic coming. Okay. We'll look at that for sure. Okay. My question is in, in a similar uh, vein. That There's a ditch along there. Is that mm -hmm. your property or is that mm -hmm. the city's place? Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't think it is. That came in our meeting uh, last week. That is the actual Department of Transportation. Yes. The DOT. Okay. The DOT, State Department of Transportation. So I think that it would, I, I've been saying this for years, <laughs> is that should be covered over. It's not a problem like that. You know, it's always plugged up and there's all this debris in it. You know, it's pretty flow, well flowing because it comes off the hill, the way the water and debris and such. And that could be filled over and, and retained as a, you know, tunnel, so to speak, or a ditch that's covered so the people that came out could turn right into that lane and then people would know that they're, you know, they can just keep going straight in that. The people that are turning in that lane go in immediately or soon after into the rut that what, what is now unused space unnecessarily. We're sneaking up on solutions, Christy. What do you think? <laughs> uh, that, that, that's a great segue into, into that second part. Did you, did you want to say anything else before uh, we move on to? No, I think, like I said, we're, we're willing to support the community on whatever the best solution is. So. Did everybody hear that? And this is going on to the cameras. Uh, <laughs> Lello, but that, that, that's the spirit of the new owners of Coco Marina Shopping Center. Let's have a hand for uh, Christy. <laughs> Christy, thank you very much. That, that's very, very meaningful because Public-private partnerships are very meaningful when you've got a problem that's lasted literally for decades, decades upon decades. Okay, you've heard from the Honolulu Police Department. You've heard from the shopping center. Is anyone here having a different definition of the problem? Because now we want to push to solutions. So if you could come, because Olelo says, if you really want to be heard when your grandchildren see this tape uh, in the future, uh, if you could speak very loud or come forward. I will, I, I'm, it's because it says, you know, the definition of, of the problem being entering and exiting. My problem is a little bit different because I'm from uh, uh, Khalil Valley and my son goes to Kaiser. So every morning we come that direction to drop him off. And this is kind of the problem. And when I got your email, um, uh, uh, we sent you a picture. And kind of, um, took an aerial map and we kind of... And You're the Mrs. Google lady. The, the <laughs> Google map you yeah, trans... And, and okay. Kind of looks like this because Jamie, this is the lady. Yeah. Um, you know, our problem is that we're trying to get our kids safely to school, you know, avoid the traffic hassles, and the problem is because everyone's trying to turn in twice over, or then sometimes they're not, and then it becomes this kind of almost jockeying for position on the road. And so yes. our idea was, well, if they want to turn left, that's great. Then to have that lane turn left and then pass that turn, have it feed into that, you know, the actual left turn lane. So that way, those of us who are going to be going onto that next street can just stay in the right lane and avoid any and all issues with that. So we're not trying to, you know, because I'm one of those horrible people that, that actually drives the speed limit and not that's oh, faster. No. I know, I know. And people are always trying to whiz past me, and all I want to do is get into school safely and make sure that I'm not causing any problems. And so that's why this is near and dear to my heart, because in, in the mornings, it's almost like you know, NASCAR, where I have to worry about people squeezing right, people squeezing left, and trying to you know, uh, dodge around us. So it's this is my concern. Very precise uh, definition of the shopping center gets in the way of people who want to go to Kaiser and, well, no, I, I, I'm editorializing a bit yeah. because the people who lived in, uh, live in Kalama Valley have the same problem at the left turn at the nighttime, trying to get through and, and go back and forth. So, you know, I mean, I just kind of want to amend the, the problem being is not just coming in and out of the mall. It's but getting beyond it and turning know, left I'm into. I'm shop there, don't worry. <laughs> is anyone else from Kalama Valley here who has that? Uh, Kalama Valley, so the same problem of... Uh, just the same thing where you, know, you don't know, because sometimes you get over in the left lane because you want to turn, but they're stopping, so you get over, but then someone who was 
waiting behind someone who's going to turn to say they want over. Mm. So yeah. Have you had close calls? Oh. Yeah. Have any? How many people have had close calls at Coco Marina Shopping Center? Numerous. Okay, at least half of you. And if they're numerous, uh, how many of you had anxiety going in and out of the shopping center? I always have anxiety going to Coco Marina Shopping Center, unless I go otherwise. I just wanted to add: it's not just people who live in the Valley. It's anybody who needs to turn left on the True. Yeah, yeah. I stand corrected. Anyone who turns left on on uh, Little Little Home Road in Kamiluiki Valley. It's thousands of people, actually. And we have people to get this book, too. Exactly. And there's actually a right turn problem in the morning because of the lack of two right turns in, in the uh, area. OK, we're still doing definition of the problem and solution. Yes, madam. You want to come and join the front, the inner circle here? Or are you going to really project out? OK, project. Please project. OK, uh, first of all, I think it's probably in but also, even coming from the bay, there's a problem because as you cross that intersection, if you want to get into the shopping center, you've got to get over one more lane right at the same time that people are turning right. So I also consider that to be danger because when you're coming down the bay, from the bay or out of Port Lock and you want to get to that shopping center, it's very difficult to do that as well. So, so I think the whole setup is wrong. It's not just going in or going to Little Little Home Road. It's actually coming down from Hanama Bay also. That's, I feel that's a problem. Mm -hmm. is that the only exits we have basically are the two that come onto a, a highway in a very dangerous situation and one that's in the back, which you can't expect visitors to find the one by the gas station because if you don't know that shopping center, that's a difficult mm -hmm. exit, which is the one I always do. Yeah. You know, we forgot to ask the police department how many people actually bypass the shopping center every day. It's got to be in the thousands. How many people are going by the Coco Marina shopping center? It's got to be definitely in the thousands. So 87 accidents. Uh, somebody has got, uh, maybe the bicycle uh, mom has got. The DOT does accounts regularly, and they have the information. It's in the tens of thousands. and I. I thought it was about 40,000 that continue to turn left on the Lily Lone Road, and it's much, much less going straight through, but I don't remember the number. 40,000 per day? It, it was large. It was large. Well, Hawaii is only 30,000 people. But you people. can confirm that the They have a Yeah. But the, it shows, it's a, so coming down or going around, turning, it's, it's a real difficulty. Who else wants to share your experience in your definition of the problem or because we're going to start going right to solutions. I want to hand out something that has been uh, bounced off to us from the Department of Transportation. Yes, sir. The other problem is a lot of people don't use their turn signal to tell you they're turning <laughs> into the center. <laughs> did, did everybody hear that? A lot of people don't use their turn signals. How many people run through red lights nowadays and they don't have any qualms about? I mean, turn signal is, I mean, there's we're, we're reckless abandon sometimes running through red lights. <laughs> Um, I don't know, I must <laughs> leave a charmed life because I have no difficulty in getting to or from I'm gonna drive the shopping center. No, he's Either obviously way. making the problems. Uh, <laughs> uh, right. He has a chauffeur. His wife drives him around all the time. That's the, okay, let's get closer now to, okay, you define the problem. Even though it's not pure, we don't have all the data, as Mr. Burns pointed out. It's, okay, we're still defining the problem. Yeah, I, I just want to make sure that we defining the problem, we recognize, I look at it as a road problem. It's not a Coca Marina problem. That's just, oh. just my, I keep hearing that. And I don't think it's a Coca Marina problem. I think it's a road mm. problem and dealing with it at that level. Mm -hmm. I'm fortunate to have Coca Marina interested in supporting that effort. So whether it needs another entrance or exit, I think the problem still is a road problem and potentially a traffic light is going to solve it. And I'm only thinking because I'm thinking about Aikahaina and New Valley, they have shopping centers, and one of those shopping centers create a traffic light and something they don't have a problem with. So I just, I just I think to that, that. that is a nice note of diplomacy, Elizabeth. Thank you for okay. sharing that. Okay. Even though if the shopping center wasn't there, it wouldn't be a problem. But it's the issue of trying to get in and out and make everybody happy who wants to go buy it, around it, and inside of it. So let, let's go into solutions. What are some of the things that were there? Some of the uh, initial things that came out was, well, let's put a stoplight there. And there was a real pushback by a number of emails that came out of that. Uh, Mrs. Bishop, you're shaking your head. No stoplight. 
No. How many people want a stoplight? Put your hand up. No, no stoplight, one stoplight. Make your case. It fixed the problem down the road in one of our neighboring towns. Which one? Which one? Well, was it Einheim or New Valley? That's one of the New, New Valley. Valley's got three lights in 100 yards it's distance. It's ridiculous. You don't need it. That, you can go to the corner and make your left turn. But now. they don't get the traffic. They don't, they don't have the volume of people who live there. We have another supporter in the back and then the bakers for the stoplight. What fixed New Valley is you don't have time shopping but it was put in when the shopping center was there but yeah. three lights in 100 yards is a bit of an overkill uh, the bakers mimi um i just refuse to go left on my way or into i just don't do it and that's where i said you're losing business sometimes because of that no i'll go i'll go around. oh you'll, you'll go around okay you won't not go in, but you'll just go around. <coughs> okay. Safety first. Okay. You generally, most people probably would know that it exists. Okay. The traffic light was was one solution. I don't see that as overly popular unless anyone wants to speak. It will. Uh, Jamie's taking notes. And by the way, if you want minutes of this meeting, you don't have to stay up all night and look at Olello. You can actually put your name on the email list. <coughs> And Jamie's taking notes, and he'll mail it to everybody. Because this is the beginning of the, the, the broken step on the, uh, on the ladder. Uh, it's going to take meetings and other things, but we wanted to start right now with you in getting your input and some of the directionality that we should be pursuing. Renee? My, my thing <clears throat> about that is that a traffic light would make it worse. A traffic light would make it worse. Mm -hmm. It makes more sense than a light where yeah. I just see the light as it's going back and come more. Particularly in the morning, going to town. Right, you have more trouble. It's like coming down Lily <coughs> Home Road at Wyatt Lewis Street. You get a green light there, you go a block, and you got to stop for cars. Well, if they time the lights out. Yeah. <laughs> well, often stoplights are the knee jerk reaction to any problem or any difficulty, and it's not in this case. Okay, what's another solution? Not the traffic light. Uh, Mr. Burns. In sports, you don't win games by hitting grand slams, especially in baseball. You bunts, walks, beans. <laughs> Fill up the bases. Yeah. Singles, doubles. Okay. And a lot of times... Buy smaller cars, you want electric cars only? And We try to do a, a big fix, and it's usually expensive, and it usually is inefficient. The problems usually start back here. It's like, you know, then it connects to this one, and then it connects... It's a sort of feed each other. So I don't think we should only look for the big problems. Like as I'm addressing this exit from Port Lock, which is where I live, I know exactly, as you might have guessed, I know exactly where the problems begin and then it starts to multiply and then it starts backing up and then it becomes a bigger problem. But if you would do certain things, you can't, you can't fix stupid and you can't fix everything so that people are, you know, I mean, the thing I don't like about uh, stopping stoplights is they're minus. They just do everything, you know, like there's nobody around and then everybody comes in and they stop everybody. You know, it's just like, it doesn't make sense. So, you know, if you would take a look at other options of painting certain areas red so people don't park, like one or two cars park, like on uh, Luna Lima, there's like certain areas where there's like enough parking stalls for four cars and it messes up the whole area just mm -hmm. so four cars, cars could park there. That's so, so many baby steps first. What, what would you be suggesting for? This, this situation at well, Copa uh, for, Well, for example, starting in Port Lock, right as you're exiting, especially during the morning hours when people are trying to go to work as well as drop the kids off and then leave, there's an area on the right-hand side that has uh, short-term parking so you can pull over and drop the kid off on the road, which blocks up the lane, which blocks up the right turn, which blocks up the you know, and then all of a sudden, you know, everyone's, you know, the right lane is clear to turn and the straight lane may be clear to turn but everyone's kind of backed up way, way mm -hmm. back and then they don't need the light and then they get more deep, you know, running red lights and stuff because they gotta get through that damn thing. So, uh, you know, to perhaps put a red paint into the, the curbing in that area so people don't take up those precious few parking places for like one or two cars, it's, it's ridiculous. Christy, is that doable? Well, it's you, not, do you get the 
Well, you're talking about the port lock. Oh, the port lock section. Okay. This side you're talking about right here. Okay. Okay. This is an example, and the same thing goes for the other, like this this multi-million dollar right lane that we put by. Where's Mr. Holzman? He was here early as the port lock community association. We had another suggestion. Let's talk about uh, this intersection here. I think we need to work on a long. Project, please. I think one of the things that you can quickly do is to put a no left turn coming out. No left so turn. Coming out and turning left out of the shopping center, whether it be you know, on either side of the Chevron, that's really dangerous when you got people going in. And that only requires a sign, which they managed to put up a little bit further down the street that you can't turn left in the court block. So I would think they could put a sign up tomorrow. The lady has put her finger on probably the most dangerous part of the whole traffic pattern. Turning left, going towards Waimanalo, is literally taking your life in your hands. I don't care how fast you can look left, right, front, and center. And be patient, as Elizabeth reminds us. It's just too dangerous. Now, that is a probable private issue, and, and Christy, I don't know if I'm putting you on the spot, but has that ever been a consideration by the Cool Community Shopping Center, that no one should turn left, they should turn right? Like I said, I'm new to this whole issue because I work with okay. the And that's why we're in the beginning the discussions yeah, of this. So okay. I, unfortunately, I okay. But that's a, a great suggestion. Just a uh, uh, comment about that. that you know, when people want to do something, they will find a way to do it. So I can see people, instead of turning left there, they will go to the next driveway and turn left from there. So, you know, I think when you're going to look at what to do, you need to look at the behaviors of people. And mm -hmm. that particular solution might not work the way well, that like it is. Um, at Wiki School, when, you, when I drop my kids off, they put up their own little no left, no left turn up to Kalama. But everyone still does it. The children are creating their own traffic signs. The no, the school. Oh, the they, they roll one out that says no left turn. So that ah. just during pick up and drop off times. So when you're take, when you're coming up the hill to turn left into Kamiliki, if you're coming back out and you live in Kalama Valley, you can't turn left. But they do. That's right, they do. But then again, it's, I don't know because they think over. it's not. Um, yeah. They're not breaking the law or anything because it's just a school sign. I don't know if that's. As you said, it's all about safety, and that and that's really why we are. Why are you here tonight? It's all about safety. That, but that's a very good point. Jamie, you got that as the, the no left turn option. Uh, yes, sir. But some of that, you know, no left turn, you don't have any other options without going miles out of your way. No, you don't. Yeah, you just you go, gotta right go, down. Down. go to the 76 station. You have to go the other, out the other exit. Over by Bank of Hawaii and up the hill. See that like getting all backed up to uh, where it is. And those of you who drive stick shift have to know how to park on the hill and get up and around. Uh, I'm going to, other suggestions, otherwise I'm going to turn to uh, Renee and Jamie and myself who met with the Department of Transportation last, Renee, what day was it? Monday? Tuesday? Last Tuesday. And because they were so busy they couldn't make it tonight and because their plan was so tentative, they couldn't give us actually a piece of paper to say this is what we propose. They have given us a facsimile solution which they call comprehensive, not only shopping center, Elizabeth, not a shopping center, but also comprehensive to the left turn lane and the right turn lane at Lulila Home Road. And Jamie, does everyone have the handout of that uh, design? All of you see the little cartoon that, not cartoon, but the sketch from my, uh, Topical view. Uh, Renee and Jamie, you guys want to come and help me to explain this? Yeah, that's the one. This was given to us verbally and with some, um, uh, I guess you could say, number 10 pencil sketches on, on Monday we have, with a lot of qualification. That's why everything here is tentative. But it would basically add a lane to the otherwise two lanes. And let's face it, the old Kalaniana Oli Highway was a danger to everyone from Aina Haina to Hawaii Kai. When they widened the highway in the early 90s, people could turn into Aina Haina and not get run into their, into their backside or get cut off. And then Neal Valley, and then it was Hawaii Kai. But when we get to the shopping center, it's the old problem of the old highway. There's not a stacking lane. A stacking lane allows those who are going to turn left to turn left. So what the DOT has proposed, and Renee and Jimmy keep me uh, straight on this, 
is that they add another lane by taking what Mr. Burns said from the section in front of food, no, sorry, it's not Foodland, it's Petco and Walgreens, and they widened it to one lane bigger than it is now, so you've basically got a lane that goes into stacking, if you will, for the shopping center, and another lane that goes straight and it turns left turns left at Little Little Home Road. So you've got, got basically two left turn lanes and one straight if you want to go up to Hanama Bay or you want to turn right on Portlock. That, in a nutshell, is what they have proposed in a comprehensive way because in the morning, they see also the need for two right turn lanes coming out of Little Little Home Road onto Kalani on Old Highway. So if they're going home with two left turns uh, onto Little Little Home Road and in the morning coming out with two right turns, and there's also a lane to get into the shopping center, it's a win-win. Uh, what I wanna do is kind of see what you guys think of that and if you look at it, how can it be improved and what should we get back to the DOT? Because what they've said is the next step, rather than come to the meeting tonight, which they couldn't make, was to sit with the Coco Marina Shopping Center Management and probably sketch out in more flesh out details that proposal that is here. Uh, Mimi, your, your point, please. I see a problem if you're coming out, out of Luma Lilo. Police project. Road. If you're coming out of Luma Lilo Home Road from Portlock side and turning left on Cal Highway, if you have two, two lanes of cars coming left, coming right, how do you get in? In other words, does that uh, jam Portlock people from getting into the left turn? Uh, does that mean you got to have a left turn signal, so it's a three-phaser, or, or we just say, people in Portlock, you don't have to go to work anymore. You, you, can't, you can't get out of the... Uh, okay, that, that, that's, a, that's a good concern. There's a lot of moving parts here. But one connects, they all connect to each other. So like, instead of trying to fix one lane or one thing, they all go back. Like if you say, I'll turn left over and go down there, then that creates a problem over there and then you've got to adjust those lanes and so forth like oh, uh, you've got those people coming out of turning left into Einheine but you can't turn left out of Einheine on that one so you've got to either go down by the end of the park, uh, shopping center by that church the which, YOP circle you which has its own set of problems because I don't know why people don't think that people can turn left two, two lanes can turn left at the same place. You, you cross over there into three lanes and they only have one left turn and one right turn. And so the guys coming out over of the shopping center create a problem by blocking because they want to go left. More people want to go left and right. And if they had made the, those two lanes go left and, you know, in other words, you could make two lanes go left and then it could also go right, which is, you know. Okay, so what do you think of the DOT proposal on having two lanes I, I, that I'm go really left? I'm really disappointed in the DOT. I don't think that they... Now, this is alternative now. They, no, no, we are not agents of them, but... Everything I've seen them do, oh. has, that really, has not been quite effective, like the three or whatever million dollar right turn there. Mm -hmm. uh, We're talking uh, about this, though. I just want to get distracted. Well, at least yeah. what do I think about an answer to this okay. question? What do I think about the DOT? I, I, I mean, the two, the two turns going into Lilo Home Road and giving one stacking lane to the so shopping center. That's so basically... I, this one, I think you can turn left, but I, I'm going to consider it taking left okay. I come out there several times a day. You said it looks good. I think what? The two going left to Lilo Home Road and the stacking lane going left to the shopping center looks good. But the two lanes coming out of Lilo Home Road blocks Port Lock. Yeah. Let's hear from Kulio Oak. Many of the problems coming back out after um, uh, dropping them off is a matter of patience. Because a lot of people come down that second lane and then push their car right into the right lane to turn. The thing is, that's a right turn lane and there's no, you know, necessarily stoppage there because it just turns and um, it's, you know, it's its own lane. If people would feed into one lane a little more patiently, instead of trying to get all the way to the front and then shove their way in, like, you know, oh, I'm gonna miss it, because like, there's no light to miss. It's just a turn lane, you know? It's just, you know, if everybody just kind of, you know, you, know, you me, you, me, and everybody gets in there, we should be okay. And so we really only need that one turn lane, that, but that's if everyone can kind of, mm. you know, Patience. cooperate with each other. Well, I think but the problem is they just kind of, you know, shove and you have to, 
you know, what, you know, what go it, back and watch What it. are the odds that that people are going to see? I know, but you know. <laughs> well, one, of, one of the things I'd like to do right there, Lane. Rob, excuse me, we have one, one, one ahead of you. Yes, yeah. ma'am. Project, please. Yeah, I have it. it would be nice if there wasn't three dry lanes there, not one. Aha. Uh -huh. So what you're suggesting there, two, like one? On each side of Chevron, and there's one by First Line Bay. So First Line Bay only it is not just one dry lane. Yep. There are three feet. First Hawaiian is exit only. Exit only, First yeah. Hawaiian Bank. But, you know, if we're uh, going to do this, what I'm saying is, you're bringing, there's two on there's both sides of Chevron. So which one is it that you're letting the cars in on? The history of the Chevron two lanes, I understand, was a Coca Marina decision. Now, this is hearsay, was when McDonald's was where Jamba Juice was, and they wanted to have a drive through. And they said, hey, we've got to have a drive through By the way, did you know that 65% of McDonald's business is drive through So, I mean, it's, it's an economic imperative. They are no longer there, correct? And that may no longer be the case. And Jamie, didn't we talk to Chevron also? No? But I think Chevron may have a say about this. But would that be a consideration of the shopping center saying, how about just one in and the first wine bank is an out? Is that a... That's something that might be a consideration. Yes, sir. That second one in gives them a chance so they don't have to rush over so quickly. If they miss the first one, they can catch the second one. Yeah, they're playing the odds, I'm not I know. Right turn uh, oh, I was thinking right of the left turn, turn in. in. Now, you know, make a left turn in, maybe only one left turn in. That wouldn't. That okay, that, isn't that what you're proposing? One left turn in? Right, that's what I'm proposing because what I see happen is, you know, it's just like everybody says. So they'll go around them just to go to the next driveway, you know. And so I think, you know, that people won't have the patience to say, well, they're going to turn into this driveway. They're still going to make that. Really what is your daughter's name? What is your daughter's name? <laughs> Casey. Casey, you want to defend your honor? <laughs> oh, you do. She drives it as me. I will Okay. <laughs> uh, but yeah, generally, I think we're a rushed people, not only as Americans, but in Hawaii. We're kicked back, it's paradise, but hey, the way people are driving, it's not so laid back at all. In fact, it's uh, metal to the pedal and et cetera, et cetera. Yes, madam. A plus for the one turn lane in with the Chevron, then there'll be more parking because then there won't be two lanes going in. That would, uh, as we parked, talked about parking earlier, that, that is true. Uh, Jamie, did you get that? This is the proposal of just one left turn lane into the shopping center, one right turn lane out of the shopping center, as long as it's in the minutes. Yes, madam. And then, Jim. A couple things. If you only have one lane turning in and it's the first one, if you're coming from Kalani Highway, it's a dedicated right hand lane or whatever from Lilo. now you're trying to cut over to get in that lane to get in Coco Marina if you're coming off the highway. So that mm. causes another danger. Which one are we talking about when we say one right turn lane in? I would prefer the one that's closer to Starbucks. The closer to the Starbucks. That's really the main entrance, correct? That's the one right in front of... And then that would be a problem if you were coming off the Kalani Road. Which, way, which direction you're talking mm. about? Well, I'm just saying coming from... Coming from where? Which direction? Why would that be? Because you have to come over a short a dedicated turn lane from Luna Lilo Home Road. And now off of Kalani Island Road. Okay, We're good. Trying to get over okay, Jim. Go ahead. You, you, could, you could eliminate the... the, the She's talking about the second one. But if, if you... Yeah, this is our main one here. We're talking about this other second exit there. You could eliminate the left-hand turn into the shopping center there by simply, if you're going to go to the expense, which I'd like to believe we would, of expanding to the lanes depicted here, you also put in a divider. 
and you close off that other lane, now people cannot turn left into there. They can turn right going out of there. And you could go down from the intersection here and miss this one and catch the next one turning right in there. But you could not come down Colonial Highway and turn across because there'd now be a curb there, which is what they need to do in front of Ina Heine on that other extra. So the divider you're talking about? Yeah, a concrete is... divider. But the hmm. other thing is, you know, it leaves two options. People can turn and left there together at the same time to get more traffic into the shopping center. It doesn't all back yeah. up. Hmm. I think first of all, I'm going to have a real issue with only letting people turn in by Starbucks because then um, and uh, the Chevron may be upset because now people are going to have to cross over Chevron to get to First Hawaiian Bank because otherwise they'll pass Chevron e behind it, which is okay. a huge traffic yeah, barrier right there. Cross, I think, more accidents in this yeah. yeah. So maybe that's give and take. Um, what if you close that one and open the other one? It's just the opposite then? People are going to cross over the Chevron to get... why you can't turn left into the First Hawaiian Bank. Other than there's a, they made it that way. Do you know the history of that? The, um, yeah, the yeah. one that's an exit only? Yeah, the yeah, first yeah. one bank. Possible I entrance is an exit. I think it was a, um, I remember talking to the manager over there. I think that was something he saw as a accident, a problem for accidents. So I'm not yeah, sure. I think, what I think that's right. It might be narrower than the other. Yeah, I think so too. Which could be my right. one, one lane. Right, yeah. right. Or, it could be. Because okay. yeah. if you get rid of the middle yeah. one, yeah. you actually have two better space entrance as an exit. Mm -hmm. but, or if you left three, then people can have options. <laughs> uh, Jamie, that was an app. Jamie yeah, went off with uh, Marissa Yamani or something. Okay, so yeah. yes, ma'am. The only reason I'm saying the one that's close to the Starbucks, which is probably interesting, is because if you come in through the other one, the turn to come into the shopping center, like if you guys ever try to go around by the Greek restaurant, right around yeah. that corner right there. So if that's we are, it's really tight. So if we're going to do that, I think you should eliminate the parking over there and open that up and make it better. Mm -hmm. Because just try to make that turn. Jamie, that was the proposal to have it in and out on the First Hawaiian Bank in the notes. Did, did Marissa, you want to leave? Okay, they, they have gone. Uh, Madam, Natalie. Uh, I have a couple of concerns with the um, DOT sketch that you have and, here. And we, we've tried to give many, you, Renee, you want to give a bigger disclaimer than I gave them? It's right. simply this conceptual. This is not a DOT proposal, okay? Mm -hmm. He was very clear about that. Oh. This is not a proposal. Mm -hmm. They have nothing in the budget for any of this. Okay. These are some thoughts okay. that they have. If the community and the shopping center were willing to work with them, they might be able to do something on this order, but that's all it is. Okay, so I have some concerns with this idea. Okay, good. Um, Very well. <laughs> we have to remember that bicyclists and pedestrians use these shoulders. And if you're going to be putting in, an, an, or if somebody's going to be putting in an entire new lane, that area has to come from someplace. And my understanding um, from the DOT back in 2006, they had a town hall meeting, and I have their plans. Um, Back then, they said that they couldn't do anything with that um, drainage ditch. And so any, any lane that we add would have to come from the other side. And there was an issue with that as well. I don't remember what it was. So trying to squeeze in a lane in here, um, I'm very concerned about because it squeezes out the pedestrians and the bicycles. Natalie, you have the very idea. good memory. Let, let, let me address that. The idea was that they would cover the drainage dish ditch and have it a covered, like a pipeline, okay. and they would use that space. Okay, so if, if there's enough room to make sure the bicyclists and pedestrians still have adequate room, and I'm not talking about just five feet, <laughs> more like eight feet at least, that might be acceptable. The other um, concern I have about this, as far as taking two lanes from Luna Lila Home Road onto Kalani on Oli Highway, right now we have a pork chop island in there. <laughs> Yeah. And so what that does is it allows pedestrians to stop and the people who are trying to turn right just turn right unless somebody's waiting there. So it's a free flowing, that's a true free flowing lane. And if you're going to, if this will be made into two right turning lanes, I think that Pork Talk Island would be removed and then you have an issue with the pedestrians trying to get across there. 
So those are my two concerns with this particular. No, they're very, very well stated. But there is the new variable that the drainage ditch would become a buried uh, underground one. So right, that, but, that's but the that only new information. That doesn't help pedestrians who are crossing Luna Lena Home Road. For the two right turn nights, right. correct, yeah. correct. So that in the uh, exit from Portlock maybe seems to be two, However, two points of discussion. Yes, Rob. Right. But you can never have a perfect world. So if you have, let's say, 10 cars coming and they all have to be in the right lane, guess how easy that is to cross for pedestrian this stuff? Because it's one after another, 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 another. So if you have two and ten, two lanes and 10 cars, you get five in each lane, they both turn, and then the people couldn't go across. Because it's not wall to wall cars going, and there has to be a certain amount of common sense where, you, where people should stop when you come to the edge, that's a law, and then they should be able to cut across. What, you know, when there's no cars, you know, I mean, Mr. Burns reminds me that uh, lest there be super expectations that, that Nirvana is going to be yeah. arrived after this town hall meeting. Uh, not true. I, I think there's going to be a win-win a with degrees of, of, of victory for everybody. There's never any perfect solutions in traffic. Look at the uh, on-ramp at the University of Hawaii. You take your life in your hands unless you've got really a good V8 engine trying to jump in and jump out of the traffic. I mean, and some of the places for the airport, and I mean, we, we don't have ideal traffic, and I'm not going to get into the rail or I'm not going to get into buses or anything like that, but we have traffic problems in Hawaii. This is something in our community that's unique to us. We're going to work on it. We're not going to let up on it. But we're now tackling something, as I said, because of industrial blindness, we've kind of accepted and we just sort of pushed the can down the road. Yes, madam, and then sir. You, you talked about the um, on ramp from university? Yes, it's an example of uh, poor okay. engineering. You use a steep one? There's another one by the Lutheran Church I use because it's a bigger. Oh, the longer gradual one. Yeah. Yeah, that I mean, that makes sense. Yeah. Those are, you, you get used to merging. <laughs> but those quick, you know, in three seconds, if you're trying to go, ever, I mean, uh, uh, to Hawaii Kai from the University of Hawaii, of the University of Avenue. You gotta really gun it and take your life. Yes, sir, and then Renee. Sorry? Crossing Kalaniana only from Fort Lock? Is there not a pedestrian pass? There's an overpass. There's an overpass, but a lot of people don't use it. I know it's too far to walk, but I would chance that. It's just like the university one, the Lutheran one is a little longer, but it's safer. Uh, the Channel 2 people said that they were going to take uh, footage from that bridge. You know, the, the vantage point of all the things we're going to talk about tonight, if you go up on the bridge and do that footage, you can see where the people are coming in and going out in a, in a dangerous way. But yeah, not too many people do walk over that. I've walked over it a few times, but not always being the best role model for not jaywalking in places that we shouldn't be. Yes, Renee, go ahead, and then we're going to go back. wanting to turn left there might be a way to do the lights so to address that where there could be pedestrian only kind of a time where everybody has to stop mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or there could be um, port lock left turn only where yep. only, I mean th there might be a way to make that workable through traffic signals that's they they would not let Portlock be shut down, but way, the way that it may uh, slow down traffic in other directions, who knows. But, and then with the pedestrians that Natalie brings up, that, those are two key issues, the exit from Portlock and those the are pedestrians. All, those are laws in place, and so when, it, when someone comes to a curb like that, you're, if you're coming, you're supposed to stop. Mm -hmm. So it's a law, and you know, people can break <laughs> laws, but you can't do everything to protect pedestrians. I mean, seriously, I mean, they're out there walking in the highway, so they have mm -hmm. to have some common sense, and the drivers have to have courtesy. So and you can't legislate morality, and, and it's stupid, it's not illegal. Statistically, though speaking, the most dangerous thing on our highways are walking in a crosswalk or bicycling. And Natalie's speaking from the bicyclists. Now, uh, I turn whatever. left out of Warlock every day, several times, and I, I would prefer turning left into two right turn lanes than to turn left into the current situation. Because they're darting out? Or? Because they're going, they're going straight, you know, they're coming straight oh. at you, and then, you know, oh, oh, I see. sometimes you don't know, you know, they're going to turn left or not, and then they go straight, and sometimes you go left. 
and the ones without turn signals. Okay. Uh, yes, back to the right, and she's going to project again. I don't. Wh why do we need the two right lanes coming from Wilhelmina? Uh, Alvin Takashida is the senior engineer at the Department of Transportation who lives either in Kamiloiki or Kalama Valley, and he takes it every morning. And he says that that thing stacks up and has been for years, sure. always been a problem to get people onto the Kalanani Oli Highway and into town. Well, I lived there since 1976. Oh, so my I goodness. I'm in the Valley, and I also have to go to work downtown. OK. So yes, I am very Rush hour? Yes. OK. And I also took my kids to private school for 18 years, too. OK, so. <laughs> so you and Alvin have <laughs> met each other. And this a lot of times. And uh, and, you know, I don't really see that that's a problem because once you get on the highway, it's going to be stacked up anyway. I don't see why the rush to get on the highway. Mm -hmm. There's other ways to get on the highway besides just this one if you don't like living on the home road. So I don't really see that that is such a necessary thing. What I will say is my granddaughter now goes to Copenhagen and I live in the real weekend. So while you're doing all this, can you also please consider the children that are crossing the street? Over there, yes, there is a bridge, but from the bridge, they have to cross into Coco Marina Shopping Center. Okay. It's true. So that means There's still a cross. It's a very yeah. safe venture because you're sitting, you know, my granddaughter's too young, she's only five. But she'll get older, and there'll be a day mm -hmm. that she'll be, you know, walking with her friends across this road. And that also voices the concern of many Portlock uh, residents who have children who, when those people who want to meet, beat the light, turn in and do a quick U-turn at Cocoa Head Elementary with kids and other people around the playground to make sure that they can get back to the light to get onto the little home road. Just Rob? To support her idea of not having two right turn lanes, there's a, there's a way that you can do it by, uh, like this multi-million dollar one that they did over here at uh, Costco. How much was it, uh, Natalie? $4 million for two right turn lanes off of Keaholi. It was going to be two and then it was going to be three and I'm sure it's at least three or four. Three or four. Okay, so the problem is instead of having that right lane free, it says stop and then go. And then people stop and then they wait and they wait and they wait. So if they, if they have like those little orange plastic things like they put by out back, then you would know that, hey, this is, uh, you know, like a free turn lane and you'd say right lane is green all the time. And that, yeah. no. instead of adding it's not like that. I mean, and it can't be. It can't be. No. Absolutely. No. This again. Talk to Natalie. Can no, it can't be. be. No. Because the other cars are going straight. You've got you bicycles right. and you have pedestrians. It cannot be. They have to look. That has gotten a lot better than it was when they first opened it. People are getting a little bit too the idea that you can turn yeah. right. You know, they pause a little bit to make sure it's clear. They have a rolling stop, so yeah. to speak. It yeah. used to be stop. Jam, and well, then says, stop, oh, and then proceed. Stop on red. Exactly. Uh, Mrs. Bishop, did you have any parting words? Keep up the good work. Oh. <laughs> I don't want a stoplight behind my house. No stoplights behind. Uh, this is a Portlock uh, perspective. Uh, we are getting near wrap up, wrapping up time, and yes. Okay. First of all, there's only 11 accidents in that stretch in a year. We don't know how many of those are turning in and out of the parking lot. I don't see a major problem. We don't know how many near misses there were, though. The miss? <laughs> no, I, <laughs> no I, I do understand you on that. I do yeah. understand. And, you know, if there is the officer's agreement from his uh, superior that he can kind of burrow down underneath the data and find out that it was backenders or it was side swiping or it was which entrance or well, however was it visitors was it local yeah, it was uh we, we, it would be better to have clear data yeah. and quite frankly for one year that's only a quick snapshot this has been going on for years and years and years so there may be a cumulative if we have the average extrapolated 80 some per year we're talking about hundreds of accidents have taken place before this has uh really been taken and, and discussed and again i point to the agreement of the shopping center to say, hey, let's talk about this. We're concerned about safety, and we're open for discussion. Because as Renee, you remember, and, and Jamie, there was just previous ownership was, hey, don't talk to us about it. It's private property. We'll do what we want to do. So I really appreciate you being here tonight. Did you want to say anything else as we get ready to wrap up? Uh, other closing suggestions, comments? 
Uh, Natalie? One other possible solution is to um, make that, right now a lot of people are um, pulling over left to turn left from the straight through lane. And if that were maybe um, extended that you couldn't turn, you know, you could pull over like at the last minute, uh, that might help a little bit. I mean, is this an instructional or educational or is a actual sign that says? Well, whatever they need to do. So they paint the paint a wide stripe you know, that says you're not supposed to go over. Uh, and then there's you know, a, lot, a sign or whatever. That okay. I mean, I'm, I'm naive and idealistic enough, <laughs> not because I've been in the Peace Corps and all that stuff, but I think when people reason together, if they really figure this stuff out, it's not rocket science, but it's keeping different groups and perspectives in a holistic perspective to make the best for the better of everyone. And this is an issue that we haven't talked about in a public forum. forum. And I want to end with where do we go from here? Because this is just the beginning of a series of discussions that started last week in our office with the neighborhood board, my office, of which the DOT in parting at that uh, meeting said, the next meeting, if you will, could you arrange to have a meeting between the Department of Transportation and the Coco Marina Shopping Center? And I see she's shaking her head saying, yes, let's sit down. So in terms of where we go from here, it's the meeting between the Department of Transportation and the Coco Marina Shopping Center, which heretofore has never taken place because there was a standoff between the two agencies. The next thing is, Jamie's going to get the minutes of tonight's meeting. And for those who have signed up with their email address, will be sent out. And you'll be apprised of this. Because look, you guys have taken your debate day, debate night, and come to this place. And that's because you guys are Hawaii Kai. You demand of your officials, let's do it better, faster, quicker, cheaper, or whatever to make sure we get the job done. So unless there's some closing comments from the neighborhood board, Elizabeth, you wanted to say something from the neighborhood board, or Renee, uh, closing comments from the board? And how you, you're not gonna give up? You're not gonna quit cooperating with my office? No, I think, I think this is a nice beginning. Yeah. Um, and you know, it's all very up in the air right now, but it, it, there's ideas, and that's what we need. We need ideas, and we need to be able to float them. And at least the DOT is not totally not willing to talk, which is where they used to be, never mind where Coco Marina used to be. Um, so, you know, I think if we just keep at it and, and try to and be nice to each other. <laughs> and there. we've been very civil tonight. No pitchforks, torches, nothing. It's been very good. Yes, sir. And then we go. Coco Marina and DOT meet. Can the public go to that also to hear what they're discussing? Oh, no, they wouldn't want to. Uh, yeah. In defense of DOT, they like to do things quietly. Quiet. Hopefully, effectively, when you say quiet. Uh, only after kind of decisions have been made would they prefer to come up. They, they would prefer this probably to be vetted before we did it, but Jamie did a great job at sketching out what otherwise was the back of an envelope kind of sketch. But let me say this for DOT also. You know, they are under a lot of flack on a lot of hot button areas and it's important that this is for us and we are not going to slack off on it. They have got so many brush fires, if I can use that term, for so many things that are going on in different parts of, of the state. And it is statewide, it's not city and county stuff. That uh, the meeting will take place, and that's a genuine offer, which they were pleased to hear that there was a cooperative spirit now in the shopping center management, so. Well, I know Susie's been trying for several years to Okay, well, turn. I think the and timing. she's always been told no, so. The timing may be right now for this public-private uh, yeah. partnership and meeting of the minds on this issue. Mr. Burns, uh, closing comments? And it, it's a, as a place to go, maybe we could leave our email addresses and that Coco Marina call together. Maybe a group if we want to come and you know see if how many people want to come to. There's a lot of ideas here and they're all mm. good and they just have to be worked out. And maybe we could get together prior then that to this meeting and the next time you have a meeting like this. It, Christy, what he's proposing is a 
task force of some kind where it's a working group with a lot of ideas and a lot of uh, input to where, it, which reminds me when we had the Kalani and Oli Highway Widening Project, the task force was with the neighborhood board, the representatives of the district, and then some key transportation officials and the outdoor circle. They met every week or every two weeks to get an update on how the highway uh, widening progress was coming along and what problems and what uh, hotline and other solutions that were there. So I think what he's saying is, is well taken. Could you bring that back to the management? Rob, I think that, how many would you, how many of you would be interested in following what his suggestion was? Basically a task force, a working group, if you will, to kind of help iron this out, uh, which would be joining the neighborhood board and representative board's office. Someone? Okay, a few of you? Okay, a lot of you, uh, you really want to, when you grew up, you really wanted to be a transportation engineer, right? Uh, by the way, uh, Rob is the guy that uh, used to run a, how, what would you call it, a small retail uh, operation? What was the name of it? Locomotion. Locomotion. Anybody ever heard of Locomotion? He's still in motion, but he's got a heart for transportation. Uh, Liz, you're going to say something. I just want to ask what the thought is the group wants together. Um, Peter Kay is the uh, new chair of Kulia Okalani Iki Neighborhood Board, and he's really interested in working with anybody who's interested in Kalaniani Oli Highway. Um, they're living where they live, um, you know, I know how you Valley. What we do up here does impact them, as you were saying, everything being connected and what they do impacts us. So I was just going to put it to the group if you form one, or perhaps you could reach out and pull, pull them in. Because I would insist that we have the lady from Kulio. Yeah. I mean, that, that was invaluable. What you go through every day when you're taking your uh, kids to Kaiser. Well, we're all in the trenches. Now. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, you know, we have grand plans and we have small plans and we have all yeah. the intermediate, you know, intermediate plans. But what I'd like to put out there is that we keep in mind that there might be stages in which we go through where one thing gets changed and we see how that kind of, you know, influences Because if you do 16 changes and then it doesn't work out, you don't know if it was change number three or change number 15. So if you do one thing and you find out, okay, that, that's just so not working or, you know, so it might be good, you know, to affect change slowly so that way there's not this huge, you know, like shocking turnover. But, you know, if, if there are certain parts of the plan that seem to be the larger reaching and, you know, smoother transfers than, you know, mm -hmm. maybe to start with small and then kind of go bigger if we need to go bigger, but then we might be able to affect a lot of change with one or two things and not have to go full scale, large, million dollar project. You know, it could possibly be changed in like a few smaller changes. There was a twinning comment with Mr. Burns earlier about uh, not despising small beginnings or doing yeah. things in a small way, less yeah, expensive. Even if the state says we don't have any money, well, let's just work on this. This is a problem that we're thinking about and yeah. dealing with every day. So, you know, like on the off ramp downtown, they put four lanes down the freeway. You know, it cost, what, $500 worth of paint, and then we played, you know, that was done by uh, Panos for Cayetano, mm. the governor. Mm. That's how long it took to just change the lanes. Uh, this is not a political <laughs> statement, but who wins the mayor's race may make a difference in some exactly. of the stuff that we're talking about also. But. That's just a neutral comment that there's a lot at stake November 6th. But anyway, I have a list if anybody wants to sign up. With me. Okay, the task force. He's forming the, he's forming the task force. There will be action after tonight. Uh, any other further comments from the neighborhood board or from the councilman's office? I would just say no? those of you who keep encountering and keep, keep thinking about it, keep coming up with ideas and so we can brainstorm here. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Contemplate. Now, you haven't heard all the solutions tonight, but remember ideas have consequences and this is at least a body and a platform by which we can launch those, get them in motion, get the discussion going and then hopefully make it a win-win situation. So on behalf of the Neighborhood Board and the office at the Capitol, thank you, thank you, people of Hawaii Kai, for not only being concerned about your community, but concerned about your children and the safety and the well-being of your shopping center and those who drive in and out and around our community. Thank you for coming tonight. Aloha thank and good night. Thanks.